In this lesson, we're going to talk about what exactly you need to look into if you want to learn how to make websites. So in case you guys are sitting there thinking, well, I want to make a website for a company or for myself, but I don't know where to start. Then I'm going to try to point out or help you guys in this video here, knowing exactly where you need to start. So basically what we're going to cover in this episode is what exactly goes into making a website and what you need to learn first. Now, just to give you guys a bit of background on myself, in case you don't know who I am, my name is Daniel. I live in Denmark right now. I have an educational background in web development and web communication. And currently I'm working inside a company as a multimedia designer. In my spare time, I make videos on YouTube that explains how to actually create websites and teaches how to code different coding languages. So in case you guys are interested in one of my courses after this video, you guys can go ahead and check those out. So the first thing I want to make clear when it comes to making websites is that making a website does not cost anything, at least to start out with. If you want to make a website, you just need to have a computer. You don't even need to install any kind of programs on your computer. You just need to have the computer and you need to have a domain. Now what a domain is, is basically if I were to go inside my browser and type something like mmtoots.net or facebook.com, mmtoots and Facebook is the domain name for the website. So later on, when you have actually made your website, you can go ahead and buy a domain name from some sort of hosting company on the web. I do actually have a link in my description where you guys can go and check one out. If you guys use the link in the description, you will get a discount based off my link in the description. But just to make it clear, you don't need to have a domain until you do actually have a finished website. So actually creating the website does not require anything else than just a computer. You can build an entire website without needing internet. Okay, you just need the computer. So just to show you guys an example of what a website actually looks like, let's actually go ahead and take a look at my website here. This website is my site called MMTOOTS, where I teach tutorials on different coding languages. And when I built this website, the way I started out was by creating a folder on my computer. I called it something like MMTOOTS. And inside the folder is where all the content for the website is stored. Just to show you guys how the folder looks like, I'm going to go ahead and open it up here so you guys can see. This is the folder. Inside the folder, I have many different files and folders that contains images, coding files, and fonts for the website. Now, of course, this is actually a more complicated website, which is why I have so many files and folders in here. So don't get freaked out if you see that there's quite a few files in here. Building a basic website does not require this many files. Now, looking at all these files, you might be asking me, well, how do we actually build these files and all the coding documents to use inside websites? Now, to do this, we just need a basic text editor. Right now, you should actually have one on your computer called Notepad. We can actually use this one in order to create websites. Of course, it's not optimal because it doesn't really have any kind of syntax or color system inside the code to illustrate which code is what. So in my case, I'm using one called Sublime Text for most of my website developments. Just to show you guys, this is how it looks like. So inside this text editor, just to show you guys an example of code, I went ahead and created a very basic index page, which is what we call a front page inside a website. We don't call it front page, we call it index page. Inside this file, I just wrote some very basic code. There's not a lot of code in here. Typically your index file would be much bigger than this, but just to show you guys how code looks like, this is how it looks like. Another programming language can be seen inside this file, where I included just a little bit of code just to show you guys how it looks like. These are actually two different coding languages that I used inside my files. So now that I've showed you guys a website folder and showed you guys a couple of examples of how code actually looks like, let's actually go ahead and take a look at the different coding languages that I recommend you guys start learning if you want to make a website. And again, we're talking about building a website from scratch using code, which is actually quite a lot of fun if you're interested in coding. So as you guys can see in front of me here, I have a document called web development. What should I learn first? And inside this document, I made a couple of illustrations showing which exact coding languages you should look into if you want to learn how to build a website. And yes, I did say coding languages because if you want to build a website from scratch, you're going to need to learn how to code. Now there's a lot of coding languages out there. And in case someone has never showed you before where you need to start, it can be quite confusing knowing exactly which one you should learn first. So let's go ahead and take a look at this diagram that I made from the beginning. As you guys can see, when it comes to web development, we have two different areas. One is called front-end development and one is called back-end development. 
Now, when you want to build a website, just a very basic website, one that has images, text, links in it, you need to learn something called HTML and CSS. These are two different coding languages that work together when you want to build a website. Basically, HTML is the actual structure of the website and CSS is what makes the structure pretty. So in case you have some text inside your website, you create it in HTML. And when you want to style the text, make it bigger, make it change color, you do it using CSS. Now, HTML and CSS is very easy to learn. Of course, in the beginning, if you've never done any kind of coding before, it can be a bit tough because you've never actually coded before. But of all the coding languages you need to learn in order to create a website, HTML and CSS are some of the easier ones and some of the ones you need to learn in order to build a website. And when you know HTML and CSS, you can basically build a complete website. You don't need to learn any of these coding languages down here because HTML and CSS can do the entire thing for you. Having said this, when it comes to making websites, if you want to make something that's more than just a basic website, you know, one that's just static, that you can't really do anything in other than clicking on links, then you need to look into other languages. And this is where we start moving into front-end development and back-end development. Because when you start out with either the front-end development or back-end development, you need to learn HTML and CSS. Then if you want to continue doing more visual stuff inside a website, something that might cause the website to change or behave in really cool ways, when you start interacting with it, then you can look into front-end development. A couple of languages we have here is called JavaScript and jQuery. jQuery is actually a coding language based off JavaScript, which a lot of people says is a lot easier to write than JavaScript. And you can actually do quite a lot of things inside jQuery. You can even mix JavaScript and jQuery together if you want to. But the basic idea I'm trying to get across here is that after you learn the basics of HTML and CSS and you want to continue building websites, if you want to work on the front end part, which is the part that you actually see inside the website, then you need to learn JavaScript first and then jQuery. Now, in case you guys wonder what exactly backend development is, it's basically all the stuff that goes on in the background. Now, you might be thinking that, well, backend development, that doesn't really sound that interesting because you can't really see the visuals of it inside a website. Well, backend development is what makes a website do stuff. So in case you guys want to have a login system, or if you want to have a search field, or you want to create any other kind of application inside your website that allow for the user to do stuff inside the website that produces some kind of result, then you need to learn backend development. When it comes to backend development, we have something called PHP, which is one of the languages you can use in order to interact with the user through a website. There's a lot of languages out there. The one that I'm focused on in my lessons here is PHP. Now, when it comes to PHP, it is a way to handle data from the user when he starts doing stuff inside the browser. But when the user does something and you want to save whatever he does, let's say we create a login system, the user goes to your website to sign up inside your website. When he signs up, we need to save his information somewhere, which is going to be inside a database. Now, databases is quite a step ahead if you haven't even gotten started with HTML and CSS yet. But again, I don't want to confuse you guys. These things down here, everything here, are only things you're going to look into after learning HTML and CSS, okay? These are bonus languages you guys can choose to learn if you want to continue learning how to build websites. Now, when we want to interact with a database using PHP code, you know, in order to actually pull out information on the user or insert information of the user, we need to use SQL. SQL is a database language and is the one that actually handles pulling out or inserting data inside the database. Now, inside the next step down here, which would actually be step three, I mentioned something called OOP PHP, which stands for Object Oriented Programming PHP. Now, after you learn PHP coding, which is again, how to actually make a website interactive, if you want to get hired by a company in the future, let's say an advertisement agency, then you're gonna need to look into Object Oriented Programming. Object oriented programming is basically just another way of programming things, but in a much more structured way in order for other programmers that you might work with to look at your code and make sense of it. There's also quite a few benefits from learning object oriented programming rather than the regular procedural programming, which is what we call it when we just learn PHP code. Now inside my diagram here, I went ahead and included a lot more information when it comes to web development. As you guys can see, we do actually have something on SEO optimization frameworks and content management systems. And again, I don't want to fill you guys with a lot of information if you just want to know where to start. 
everything else that I'm explaining in this video for the rest of the video is going to be in order to give you guys a full view of what exactly you need to learn further down the road. Okay, so after we look into, for example, HTML, CSS, and we have looked into JavaScript, jQuery, which is front-end development, and also learned a bit about PHP and SQL, in case you guys want to go both ways, we can start looking into something called JSON and AJAX, which is basically when JavaScript and PHP comes together in order to do stuff together, in order to do much more cool things inside a website. An example of this would be in case I want to create a message system inside my website. You know, we go into a website, like the one they have in Facebook, where you can write to other people. In order to do this, when you do stuff in PHP, every time you need to make changes to a website, it requires that you refresh the browser. And again, you can't refresh the browser each time you want to see a new message from another user, you know, when somebody writes to you. So we use Ajax as an example in order to get the data from a database without needing to refresh the browser. So if you want to create something like a message system inside a website, we would need to learn something like Ajax, okay? So these languages down here are languages that we can use in combination with JavaScript and PHP. So now that we talked about some of the basic programming languages we have out there in order to get you guys started with web development, let's actually go ahead and talk about some of the other elements when it comes to web development. So when it comes to web development, and you want to take it much further than just creating websites, let's say you actually want to do this as a job in the future, you're going to need to learn a couple of other skills. Now, the first one I'm going to talk about is search engine optimization, which is called SEO in short. Now, when you go to Google and you want to search for something, let's say I want to search on HTML tutorials. Now, I want to click search. There's going to be a lot of different links and websites popping up inside Google search page. Now, the thing that actually determines which page you should be at the very top when you search inside Google, it's based off something called SEO. Now, when it comes to SEO, we have two different fields. We have something called on-page SEO and we have off-page SEO. Both of these go very deep and are very complicated to learn. And there are actually people out in the world who makes a lot of money just doing SEO for companies. So when we have SEO, we have two different types. We have on-page and off-page SEO. On-page is basically when we SEO optimize the code to make sure that Google actually likes our website and off-page SEO is when we build up some kind of value by having people visit it. Again, this is a very simple explanation of SEO. It's actually very deep when you go into SEO optimization. There might be some tutorials on this channel in the future regarding SEO. Right now, there isn't any kind of videos. So in the future, I might get into it. Another field you guys can look into when it comes to web development is something called frameworks. Right now, if I were to view some kind of website inside my browser, in order to make it easier for myself to create these websites and to make sure that other developers know exactly how the website has been created, we can use something called frameworks. There's a lot of different frameworks for a lot of different languages. In case you guys want to learn a framework for HTML and CSS, we have something called Bootstrap and W3.CSS, which is a way for you to program a website that both make it responsive, meaning that you can see it inside cell phones and actually adjust to the cell phone screen and makes everything look a lot nicer. So basically, once you guys have learned the programming language, I recommend you guys look into frameworks for each programming language. You can find frameworks for HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and some of the other languages we have out there. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is something called a CMS system, which stands for Content Management System. Now, you might have heard about some of these, like WordPress, which is actually the most popular CMS system out there, which is basically a way for us to, well, some people do actually say you can create websites using WordPress, which is basically true. If you learn how to do WordPress, which is basically just going into your browser, and then you can drag and drop and do stuff inside a website just to make a website. This is a very easy way to make websites without needing to code anything. But I need to say, if you decide to make websites using a CMS system, you're gonna make websites that look very much like each other. So if you have a client that wants you to make something unique, you shouldn't be using WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, Ombaku in order to make these websites, at least when it comes to the themes that are built in to these CMS systems. Now, I might have confused you guys a bit about what exactly a CMS system is. So just to explain it to you guys, when you make a website for a client, let's say I have John and I need to make a website for him. I then program a website, give it to him. But because John doesn't know how to program and at some point in the future needs to change the content inside the website, we need to include a CMS system inside the website, meaning that instead of having to go inside the code and change stuff, John can just simply go inside a dashboard inside the browser using a login system. 
and change the content inside the website, whether it being text, images, or creating new pages. So this is basically what a CMS system does. And again, this is something you might want to look into if you plan to have clients in the future. So I hope this gave you guys some kind of overview over what exactly you need to look into when it comes to learning web development. I'm gonna go ahead and save this image, put it inside my description for you guys to download. So just to recap really quickly, if you've never created a website before, I recommend you guys start out by learning HTML, CSS. Then afterwards, I think you guys will start learning JavaScript and jQuery since these kind of goes together with HTML and CSS. Then after learning JavaScript, you guys can look into learning PHP and SQL since it allows for you guys to do more things inside the website, such as creating a login system. And then once you've done this, I recommend you guys looking into a CMS system like, for example, WordPress. Again, if you guys are not interested in doing a CMS system, I recommend you guys look into something like Bootstrap, learning some kind of framework that you can use inside your websites in order to make it mobile responsive or tablet responsive as soon as you get started programming. So you don't actually have to do it manually after you're done creating your website using HTML and CSS. So now that we talked about all this, I'm gonna go ahead and recommend you guys go back to my HTML series inside my YouTube channel or inside my website and start looking into how to do HTML and CSS. Inside my HTML and CSS series, I talk about which programs you can use or text editors you can use in order to get started with programming. And I also teach you guys how to upload websites to the web later on when you do actually have a finished website. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I'll see you guys next time.